Okay, so today we are going to run the two out wire and we are going to shut everything off, the solar, the batteries and uh, everything going to the distribution block and disconnect the battery and run our cable, get our length, cut it and install our lugs and heat shrink and then we'll uh, reconnect everything, put the batteries back in the uh, battery boxes and hopefully uh, we can get that done. Plus we still have to run a uh, positive and negative to our bus bar. So with that, let me go ahead and uh, get my cable strung out, see how much I need, and then uh, get things cut, situated, and then we'll uh, tackle on crimping those lugs on that two-out wire. So just as with the uh, one-out wire, we will uh, start out probably with our 70 millimeter and then drop down to our 50 once we get this crimped on. But we'll set our wire in place, take our lug, set next to it, figure out how long we need to trim back our cable. And then we take our cutters, put on there, and slowly turn that around. Pull that off. Boom. Just like so. Try not to cut any wires, but you know, you're going to get some in there. Then we can fit our lug. Basically, I'm just pinching that and making sure that I get all the wire in. Just like so. Yeah. Nice and tight. Turn my lug so that the holes line up with the writing. And then we'll set our crimper in place. And what I'll do is start here close to the to the wire, the back here. We'll get this just snug. So it gets a little bit of a grip. Okay, and then I can pinch the wires together on that lug so it's in there as tight as can be. And I will start compressing. Yeah, the 70 is uh, fairly big. I don't even think it, uh, it barely made it crimp. So we're gonna switch those out to the 50s. Pretty simple setup. Slide those in place. And let's do it one more time. All right. So, like, like I said, you get that up there snug. Just so it holds it, and then push the wire in as far as it'll go. Hold that and reef her down. And it makes a fairly nice crimp. So I'll do one more up here in the front. Perfect. And then once uh, once the two clamps meet together, stop. If you go any farther, you will break the tool. Uh, and that is as far as we need to go. And it gives a very nice crimp. So that's not going anywhere. I have uh, three cables that I need to do, both ends. And then we can put the shrink tape on. And then we will... Uh, install that on our battery. So our, for our heat tape, we'll just take, I took some, uh, oh I don't know what they were, three inch pieces or so, 
cut those in half, slip those right over my lug and the wire, and I put it I put it about right here on the edge, like so. Take my heat gun. like so. So now that we have our shrink tape on all of our lugs we are ready to begin connecting. So we are going to have uh, one cable that goes across connects the two batteries in series to make a 12 volt then we're going to connect a uh, power cable here negative cable here. Negative will go on this side positive will go on that side and uh, we will have 12 volts to the system. Uh, once that's complete, then it's just a matter of turning on the switch, turning on the inverter to see if it lights up. Uh, we'll also put our batteries in the box, get those situated, and uh, we'll save uh, button everything down for another day. So just a real quick shot of what we've got so far. So we've taken our positive, and we ran that through to our positive bus bar. We've taken our negative, we run that to our negative bus bar. Then we connected from our positive, or excuse me, our negative on this battery, ran it across here, and tied it to our positive here. Our batteries are now sitting in the boxes. I'll put the lids on here in just a minute. The solar is hooked back up. Uh, currently, uh, shut off switch is off for the inverter. I turn the power back on for the solar power going to the batteries and for the distribution box and we have power coming in from the solar once again. Now like I said we'll button things up here uh, later. I still want to put some cable clamps on everything get things uh, tight and where they're going to stay. I'm going to go ahead and put the lids on and put my terminal uh, covers back on uh, and then we will give the inverter a test. Okay so we have all of our cables, wires, batteries, everything hooked up and now we are ready to throw the switch and make sure that the inverter works. And So uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a shot of the reading that's on the front of the uh, inverter provided it lights up and then I have a cup of water. We'll uh, kill the switch to the AC, plug it into the inverter for our microwave and refrigerator, and we'll give the uh, microwave uh, a good run. All right, on with the show. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and turn our battery switch on. All right, no smoke yet. Now we will uh, take a look at our inverter and turn it on. All right, so about uh, 13 amps or volts, excuse me, that's what it's saying here. And we do have power going to the microwave. Fridge is running. Our meter says that we have 13.2 volts on the battery and 13.3 on the inverter. So now we can give it a test run. So put that bad boy in there. We'll set it for about two minutes and hit start. Ready? Go.
what we're doing over here. So it is telling us that we're dropped down to about 12 volts, 11.9. An eight. So everything seems to be running okay. Um, obviously the sun is down so we don't have anything charging the batteries and I don't have the converter plugged in. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how well this holds up. So, to belabor the uh, extra minute here, I'll just go ahead and kill it, and I'll let you know what happens afterwards. All right. So, did we uh, heat up some water? Oh yeah, we did heat up some water, and uh, we did drop down a little bit. 12.7 so that depleted the battery just a little bit and uh, let's see it should revive just a hair so it should come up so cool we got a good test everything seems to be working fine um, power is running through all of our cables drawing a good current no buzzing no beeping no nothing and uh, battery slowly coming back up so we should be about 12.7 still yep all right so now let's try out the uh, converter and uh, see if we can't charge them batteries back up so currently we're sitting at about 13 volts on the battery once it uh, cooled down a little bit from that little test so now we'll uh, go ahead and plug in Make sure our converter's working and we'll check out the voltage on the batteries. Well, that popped things up real quick. Let me uh, give you a shot what's going on. So the battery uh, voltage jumped way up there. We're about, what do I see, 14.5. I might have to adjust that uh, converter just a little bit, but the initial uh, charge is going to be fairly high. And what are we saying on the inverter here? 14.8. So yeah. So it's charging the batteries. And uh, looks like we're uh, up and running. So the fan kicked on on this bad boy. So it's, uh, it's working to charge the batteries. Well, all in all, I think that was a pretty good test. So everything is working fine. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So the converter is converting. It's uh, got the fan on right now, so it's charging the batteries. And uh, the inverter works very well. Runs the microwave just fine and uh, obviously it powered that refrigerator no problem so what's next I think what I'll do is come out probably tomorrow and start wire clamping everything up buttoning things down so things don't shake and vibrate and move all over the place I'll get that taken care of and then um, what do we have left we do have some lights that we need to get installed and That'll probably, I think, will be maybe my next task. Anyway, so I'm pretty happy with this. It's working out really well. Things are working, and uh, yeah, so it won't be too long. We're going to be out cooking somewhere or smoking. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for watching and uh, subscribing and liking the channel, and thank you for the comments, and as always, stay tuned.